Father, we thank you even for the word that I'm just about to say in this place. That it is going to empower someone. It is going to empower us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. The message that I want to say eh, is related to a message that I shared in the past. It is entitled Decisions, Kingdom Mindset. Decisions, Kingdom Mindset. Decisions, hyphen, Kingdom Mindset. Hallelujah. Say decisions. Say decisions. Say decisions. A human being is one interesting creature on earth. Unlike a rock, a human being is able to think. Say thinking. Say thinking. Let us go to Proverbs chapter 13. Let us go to Proverbs chapter 13. There is something which I want us to explore from Proverbs. Today we are going to be resorting to the uh, book of Proverbs for a couple of times before I minister to people. I know there are people who have got needs who want me to minister to them. Hallelujah. 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 There is something which I want to show you. There is something which I want to show you in Proverbs chapter 13. In Proverbs chapter 13, let us read verse 15 and verse 16. Verse 15 says, Good understanding gains favor, but the way of the unfaithful is hard. The way of the unfaithful is hard. Verse 16, Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool lays open his fall. I, I want us to take note of verse 16. It says, Every prudent man acts with knowledge. Hallelujah. Every prudent man acts with knowledge. So in our making of decisions, the question which immediately arises after I've read that verse, do we act with knowledge? Are we people of good understanding? Those are questions which immediately arise from those verses. Am I of good understanding who gains favor? Because this is the year of favor, prophecies and miracles. And you have to know how to attract the favor of God which is there in the atmosphere. Some people have not yet experienced the favor of God. And they are wondering whether the theme is true. Let me tell you, my brother, my sister, the theme is true. Hallelujah. The theme is true, but uh, favor is not something which just comes to you automatically. It is something which you have to gain according to that verse. And how you gain favor, it depends on how you understand. All of us are able to understand something. But now you need to have good understanding. Say good understanding. Good understanding. Say good understanding. good understanding. Let me read verse 15 again. It says in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 15, Good understanding gains favor, but the way of the unfaithful is hard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible contrasts, it gives us a contrast of two situations or two scenarios. The first scenario is of a person who has got good understanding, who gains favor. So if you want God to release his favor upon your life, or if you want the favor of God to settle upon your life, you must cultivate good understanding. If you are enjoy, not enjoying the favor of God, you must ask yourself, do I have good understanding of the word of God? Hallelujah. Because if you don't have good understanding of the word of God, you will not be able to attract his favor so that uh, it is retained and it works in your life. Uguti umu sagankulunkulu kumbenis kao sagankulunkulu siku sebenzele. Kubalegi lugutube logu zwisisa ouhle. Not ugu zwisisa. Ngova lavantaba avi lavantaba is kwekwe ba zwisisa. Gulogunyaba gu zwisisa hai. Amen. We need to have good understanding. I want you to pray and say, Oh Lord. Say, Oh Lord. I pray for good understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 
I want us to proceed. We, our, the title of our message is Decisions, Kingdom Mindset. Say Kingdom Mindset. Because as Christians, we actually belong to a kingdom. That's why the devil, together with these demons, they, are, they fight Christians. Because Christians, they belong to a kingdom. Say, I belong to God's kingdom. Say, I belong to the heavenly kingdom. Say, I am a celestial being. Say, I am a celestial being. Say, I am supernatural. Say, I am extraordinary. What kind of a mindset should we have? Because when we look at people in the world, they are worried about natural or material things. Or they are worried about carnal things. But what kind of a mindset does Jesus Christ teach us to have? What kind of a mindset ought we to have? I want you to ask yourself, what kind of a mindset? Say, what kind of a mindset must I have? We have got the answer from the word of God. Let us go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to verse 33. Actually, we'll end at verse 34. It's quite a couple of verses, but uh, we are going to read them. Because the word of God empowers us. Say the word of God empowers me. I'm going to read Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to verse 34. It, say, it says, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or, or about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? 26. Look at the birds of the earth, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into pans, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cupid to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what sh shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and this righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Hallelujah. One thing which is recurring in that, in that passage of scripture that I've just read is that the Bible is questioning us from being worried. Hallelujah. The Bible discourages Christians from being worried. Being worried is an anti-Christian kind of mindset. It paralyzes you from linking with God. The moment you become worried about something, it sets off negative energies operating in your life. Hallelujah. You paralyze your mind from finding solutions. God created your mind to be a problem-solving faculty within you. Your mind has got problem-solving faculties. Ingondo yake aneli suutla zulula ino mayi pinking. Otangana la. La nga ingondo yake aneli suutla zulula zinyi zinking. Bako nabantu empagati no pila giyo in the community in which you are living. We are able to solve the problems that you are going through. So if you are not able to solve your problem, you will discover I'm able to solve your problem. If I'm not able to solve your problem, you will discover that there is someone in the body of Jesus Christ, who is able to solve your problem. So there is no point in being worried. And if all of us as believers who are not able to solve each other's problems, we still have got God, who is the greatest problem, problem solver of all time. Hallelujah. We have got Jesus, who is the answer to all the fundamental issues of life. So we need to, our focus. We should not focus on our problems. Our focus should be on Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So when you have a kingdom mindset, you avoid being worried about carnal things. 
you avoid being worried about what you are going to eat, about what you are going to clothe, about tomorrow. The Bible even discourages us from worrying about tomorrow. There are a lot of people who are worried about tomorrow before they even reach it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know why the Bible discourages us from being worried? The, ch the reason why the Bible discourages us from being worried is because in your faculty of imagination, there is a certain level of perception within your faculty of imagination which doesn't dif differentiate between real and imaginary things. Hallelujah. Which doesn't distinguish, which doesn't differentiate, which doesn't see a contrast or a difference between real and imaginary things. So when you are always worried, when you are always focusing on negative things in life, you create a mental image of a scary situation and your, your entire system becomes afraid. Hallelujah. Your entire system becomes afraid and you start to develop a lot of sicknesses in your body. Hallelujah. So when the Bible tells you and me that we should not be worried, it is actually preserving even our bodies. stress. We discover that discover with the PP it's out of balance as well. The blood pressure. You will discover that their blood pressure is either high or too low, or they've got hypertension as well. The people who, who have got a lot of stress. And when you are always worried, later on it develops into depression. When you are always worried about something. Hallelujah. Some people are worried that they've got enemies. Just, just imagine Jesus Christ when he was a human being on earth. Yet enemies wanted to kill him. You, you are worried about enemies who are always gossiping you, but they, they are not even able to kill you. But you are worried that there are people who are always gossiping you. I mean, what is gossiping you? Compared to Jesus Christ, who, 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 who didn't only have enemies who were gossiping him. But we had enemies who were plotting to kill him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I mean, whether you have got enemies or you don't have enemies, you should not be worried. Whether you have got problems or you don't have problems. And let me tell you something. There is someone who told me, I always hear this kind of speech when I'm relating with quite a lot of people who are given to stress. They always tell me, tell me, Pastor, I've got a lot of problems. <laughs> and the funny thing is that I've never met, uh, I mean, I'm, I've never met a person who said to me, Pastor, I've got a few problems these days. A person who says, Pastor, I've got a few problems. Or, Pastor, I have no problems. I always meet people who say, Pastor, I've got a lot of problems. If you have got a few problems, it means you are just about to die. Because for you to live everlasting life, you need many problems to be solving. Actually, you need problems which are endless for you to live forever. Just imagine if you have got eternal life, but then you have got no problem to solve. I mean, it will be a boring life. You will be living a boring life. Before you even think of it, there is soap. Before you even use the soap for bathing, you are already clean and well-dressed. And before you even eat, your stomach is already full. I mean, and then you are living forever. You don't need to go to school. Before you even read a single book, you are already a professor. Without going to school. Hallelujah. Do you think that is a life? God put you in this world to solve a problem. If you look at the organs of your body, all of them, they are, for, they are for solving problems. All of them. You talk of your eyes, they are for seeing. Because there are no other organs in the body which see. You talk of your feet, they are for walking. Because the, other than your feet, there are no other uh, organs to, to, to provide you with mobility. That must show you that you as a human being, you exist in a community to solve certain problems. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So your mindset, you must tell yourself in your mind that uh, God created me to solve certain problems. Hallelujah. I want you to say I exist in the body of Jesus Christ to solve problems. Say I am a problem solver. So you should not be worried. And then the next question 
another person will have. What if worry comes on its own? It never comes on its own. You will be meditating on a certain situation which is negative. Worry will never come on its own. If you are focusing your mind on positive things that are taking place in your life, or on the blessings that God has brought upon your life, you will never be worried. Hallelujah. It's a question of what your mind is focused on. Hallelujah. It is a question of what your mind is focused on. You have to focus your mind on positive things. Jesus Christ tells us what we should focus on. In one verse, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. So you need to concern yourself about the kingdom of God. When your focus is on the kingdom of God, when your mindset is on the kingdom of God, and you become consumed in the needs and the desires of the kingdom of God, you will realize that the things that other people waste a lot of time praying about, fasting about, looking for, they will be taken care of without any much effort on your part. My question is, in his three and a half years of ministry, when did Jesus Christ go to the fields to farm? When did he go to, to the granary in order to, to grind wheat, in order to produce, to have enough flour for, to bake bread for 12 men and their families? How did Jesus Christ sustain 12 men who were, who were always working with him for nearly four years? He was concerned about the kingdom of God. As for provision and the place or the places where they were going to sleep or what they were going to wear in those three and a half years, he was not worried about that. He, he knew that his mandate was to tell people about the kingdom of God. And then as he carries out that mandate, it was up to God to work out circumstances and situations to solve his problems. Hallelujah. The reason why we don't have solutions that gravitate to us when we have problems and situations and circumstances, is that, is that most of what occupies our minds is not the kingdom of God. It is our own small problems. It is our own small wealth. It is our own small troubles that we are going through. Our small dreams. But there is a bigger dream than yourself, which you ought to focus on. There is a bigger dream than myself, which I ought to focus on. There is a bigger dream than anything which you are seeing in this world. There is a bigger dream than MTC or ZANU-PF for the Republican Party or the Democratic Party or even this flag movement or that flag movement. There is a bigger dream than anything which you have ever heard of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that dream is from the heart of God. It is called the kingdom of God. There is a bigger cause. There are some people who are not afraid of wearing a flag and moving around with the flag. They don't mind the implications. They were kneeling at the high court. I'm not saying they were, I mean at the magistrate's court there in Arar. They were kneeling. I'm not saying what they were doing was wrong. I'm not their judge. Hallelujah. But I'm saying, if those people, they are seeking solutions to earthly problems and they are not seeking the kingdom of God, their energy and their time is wasted. Their energy and their time is what? Wasted. Say wasted. wasted. Say wasted. wasted. Say wasted. wasted. Anything you have to do, you have to do it. 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 You to do it. You have 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 to do Ya pendu kisi ngusini ya lechara, ya si kachwa hii yuse tukutibe ngprofes. Indo tankwa. So nga zufunde, ube le zuko, kwa kika une reti, njenge chaketi kamfo wetu, mbe njenge embe kamfo wetu. Ukambu kunyayi lancho, ya busu kunyayi lancho. Ubuti sengi le PhD. Nga unge elu mbuso kankulu nkulu, ipa ipi liti kui izeleze. Uche su wabuza, what shall it profit a man? To win the whole world. To own the whole world. But to lose his own soul. How do you lose your own soul? By seeking other things. By having a mindset which is geared or focused on other things other than the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've, I've, I've met a lot of situations as a pastor. 
of uh, brothers and sisters who will be looking for a marital partner. Especially these days, I've got a lot of grace of uh, people who are asking me, should I marry this sister? Should I marry this brother? Who would have found someone? And now, there are questions, one thing which I've always discovered is that there are questions, all, all of the people who have ever consulted me, their questions are self-centered. They are not court or kingdom centered. They are not court or kingdom centered. There is no one who has ever asked me the question, Pastor, uh, I, I need to know from God whether this person is, is so kingdom minded that we can be able to fulfill the will of God. Because the job that you are seeking you should not seek a job which is going to give you enough food or which is going to give you enough shelter. If you are seeking a, a, a job and you are asking yourself, to what extent this job is it going to enhance the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom of God? To what extent will it promote the glory of God on earth, this job that I seek to do, or this business that I'm doing? As an altar in the marketplace, to what extent is it promoting the name of Jesus? When we have that kind of mindset, Jesus Christ will root for you, and he will cause you to succeed. When others are being retrenched from your workplace, you will be promoted. You will be experiencing promotion in the name of Jesus Christ. When others are losing opportunities in business and their businesses are faulting or closing, your business will be promoted and you will experience increased opportunities. Why? Because God will be taking you as a conveyor belt to convey resources to his kingdom. Because the thing which is occupying God even in this season, the thing which is occupying God even in our generation, the thing which is occupying God even in, in these last days, it is his kingdom. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 2 verse 44, in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall not be passed to any man. Hallelujah. The God of heaven is busy constructing a kingdom. And we are required by God to be co-workers with him in his setting up of his celestial kingdom. When you are looking at your church, is your church kingdom minded? Are the members of your church kingdom minded? You as a family person, are you kingdom minded? If you have got a boyfriend or girlfriend, is the relationship kingdom minded? Or it is just feelings minded? <laughs> Hallelujah! We are so is it kingdom minded? Hallelujah. 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 So whatever you are seeking, is it centered on the kingdom? Because a lot of people, whatever they are seeking is not centered on the needs of God. A lot of people will be requesting prayer for healing. They just want to have healed bodies which are not promoting the kingdom of God. Their mindset is that I need a healed body so that I'm comfortable. I can move around Wembon with Lamingon. But my question is that healthy pot, why do you need a healthy pot? If you are sick, why do you need a healthy pot? You will say you look like you have a healthy pot. Yes, I've got a healthy pot and I'm carrying a microphone and I'm promoting the kingdom of God. I need a healthy pot to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. I need a healthy pot to go to the old people's home. I need a healthy pot to go to Tembiso. I need a healthy pot to pray for others to be healed. Why do you need a healthy pot? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why do you need a car? You need a car so that you can move around and you pick as many women as you can. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or you need a car to promote the gospel of the, of, of the kingdom of God, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why do you need these resources that you need? Why do you need the education which you are pursuing? Why do you need the profits that you are looking for? Do you need the profits that you are looking for in your business to promote your own little kingdom? Or you want to promote the empire of God? The only thing which is everlasting is the kingdom of God. 
Hallelujah. The only thing which is everlasting is the what is the kingdom of God. The only thing which abides forever is the will of God. Let us go to 1 John. 1 John. 1 John. Hallelujah. I, I'm going to finish this message next week on Sunday. I'm not in a hurry to finish it. But there are things that I want to touch on. Hallelujah. Let us go to 1 John. I want us to examine something. We need to be kingdom centered in our thinking. We, 1 John. First John. It's near Revelations. Not John the Synoptic Gospel. 1 John. I want us to see something in 1 John. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to have that kingdom mindset. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. 17. And the world is passing away and the last of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I'm, I'm going to read the last two verses. Before I read them in Zulu, I'm going to read them in English. It says in verse 16, For all that is in the world, the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away and the last of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Hallelujah. Let us go to 1 John. You are already in 1 John. I'm going to that verse in the Zulu Bible so that we can all benefit. Amen. Kingdom minded. Hallelujah. You would unlap and lap port when you would change some report when you had to be secretly and cool. Oh, is secretly an uncool, it you will young cool and cool. You were sent for a week or talking on a part where secretly and cool, it you will young. You were sent city, oh, no, no, you go put it to see the secretly and cool, when Venice kitchen is a week or talking on moon. Seven summer resources are my name, good is Cochanis a week or talking on moon. Combine seven summer resources are my name, good is Cochanis is a little bit. Hallelujah. I was going to give that illustration. Very soon I will be having a port. So that if I want to teach and write on the port, I'm in my other life as an academic, I teach and I illustrate things on the port. I, I think I will need a port. We will buy a port, Lesanes Folto, Lesanes Nan, a white port, so that I can be teaching some of these things. Hallelujah. So that I can be drawing diagrams. So that you understand when the word of God is being rightly divided on the port. Hallelujah. 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 1 John chapter 2 verse 15. Ninga tandi izwe nezinto ezezwe. Uma umuntu etanda izwe. Utando luga ise aluko guwe. Ngoguba guonke ogu sezwe. Inkanu goye nyama. Nenkanu goye ameto. Ngoguz gabisa ngaloku gupila. Agu veli guise. Koto agu vela ezwe. Izwe liya zula kanye nenkanu goye alu. Kepa owenza intando kankulu nkulu utala kuze kube mpangate. Hallelujah. Iwi no kukufuka ayo imtandazwe niyako. Nga utandazwe li utu nkulu nkulu ya kuniki umsevens, mbene kuniki boyfriend, mbene kuniki girlfriend, mbene kuniki ndota, mbene kuniki umfaz. Ufutuwa iwi ni zinka nuko hini kumbeni intando kankulu nkulu. Question marking ka. Hallelujah. 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 Iwi no kukufuka ayo. Mwabi Bible lit the one who does the will of God the Father abides forever. What is propelling you to appear before God? Because the devil appeared before God in the book of Job. Job chapter 1 and I believe in Job chapter 2 or towards the end of Job chapter 1. He appeared before God. And the sons of God as well, whom I believe to be holy angels, they also appeared before God. 
Now the devil was propelled by something else other than what was propelling the angel. You may appear before God, but what is propelling you? Is it the desire of this world? Are you being propelled by carnal desires or you are being propelled by the will of God? The sons of God in the book of Job, chapter 1, they were being propelled by the will of God the Father to appear before him so that they could report, give a report of their activities. But we also see the devil also appearing who was propelled by his desires. And it begins when God engages him or when God provokes him. Something which was hidden, when he appeared and he stood among the sons of God, he, he was appearing like the rest of the angels. Yet his mission was different. When you are in the church or when you are in the kingdom of God, do you have any other mission other than the mission of the kingdom of God? What is your mission? There are a lot of people who say, I am going to go to the church and I am going to go to the church. 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 When Jesus Christ died on the cross, you can get these things if you have got a proper mindset. Hallelujah. You can get a husband, you can get a wife, you can get a boyfriend, you can get a girlfriend, you can get a job, you can get a healing, you can get whatever you need if you have got a proper mindset. Hallelujah. If you have got a proper mindset. What is your mission? You may be standing among us, but what is your mission? What is propelling you to be here? If you are propelled by the desire for healing because your body is diseased, the moment you receive healing, you leave us. The one who does the will of the Father will abide forever. Let us go to Matthew chapter 7. When the Lord Uwutin daba yewi ili gankulu nkulu lelo mbuso gankulu nkulu. Iba lego gunga ganani. Watu mbuso gankulu nkulu. Uba legi ili guyu nkulu nkulu. Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to read ama versi anga tandegi. Especially ngensu kuzetlezi. Lape esko chansa kakuliz maanga lezi nyizind. Hallelujah. It says, Funuguti, Umfundisi, Umfundisi, Wakonyes, as civil with your professor and your poster, my professors, like a YouTube. Usego a chacha in the phone. Hallelujah. Usego a chacha in the phone. Usego a qualisa in a man pecking a mad. Nice man, yes, is in a zinger promo, Tumbuso Gankulunkul is promo, Tamavis wet. We are doomed. Did you hear what I said? Nte nga izmang esi zenza Zinga paramisi ika maliga jesu lombu so gankulu nkulu ya doomed Why do we desire miracles? Is it to promote the will of God or to promote the name of our church? Or the name of our past? Uwenze luguti la ave ngumecha Ava nyebonke bebe maina vanga yenelisi uwenza Kwenko uwenzo wa mfundi suetu Bebe ngwa Pela ngwa usitu owa kumfundi si ngumecha Utaba nye ngumaina By implication Ngao akumfundi se ngumecha aimoyo. Ava nyaba fundi sebe ngumaina sponi levani vani o maina tavani ngube o whatever. By implication that's what you will be saying. Why would you need to add mecha next to a title which is in the Bible? Because in the Bible agula mtu wa utwa imecha prophet. There is nothing like that in scripture. There is no minor prophet. There is nothing. All of this fetishism all of this fetishism, it's caused by that you have abandoned the target. And the target is the kingdom of God. In a kingdom, in most of these earthly kingdoms at the present moment, there are three main arms of a state. We have got the, the executive. The executive in Zimbabwe is headed by the president, President Arachim Mugabe. He's the one who, exert, I mean, who heads the executive. And then you have got the legislature or the parliament where laws are made, which are used by the executive. And then you have got the judiciary. These are the arms of government. 
Now, all of these arms of government, they are equally important in the running of a state. You can't run a country or a state or a nation without any of these arms of government. Hallelujah. Amen. I know to most people it looks like in a country, the president is more important than the judiciary. But my question is, can a president rule without laws? Can a president rule without courts of law? Now, if the judiciary pass, passes a judgment, who will implement it if there is no executive, which has got executive authority, to command the apparatus of the state, like the police or central intelligence or the soldiers, to institute the policies of government? So all the arms of government, we see that they are also important. So if in the body of Jesus Christ, I'm an arm which is singing, and in the body of Jesus Christ, you are an arm which is performing miracles. And another person in the body of Jesus Christ is, a, is an organ which is translating Bibles into different languages. We are all equally important because there is no major prophet without a Bible translated. There is no major prophet without people singing in the present worship team. Except if the major prophet is multi-talented. Even though she is multi-talented, I mean there are things that she will not be able to do at the same time. If she is busy ministering miracles, she can't be an usher at the same time. Hallelujah. She can't be on the TV crew at the same time. She needs the TV crew. If she is a major prophetess or a major evangelist, we need each other. Let us say we need each other. Say we need each other. So, whereas the mindset which is motivated by the carnal desires of this world is a mindset of competition and comparing ourselves to other people, the mindset of the kingdom is a mindset of complementing each other and working together. We know that if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, we go together. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go very far, let us go together. Hallelujah. You will need someone if your journey is a long journey. But if you just want to tantalaza and, uh, you know, just go fast, go alone. And compare yourself to others. Let us read this sobering warning from the word of God. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. This are verses which are not very popular in, in, in much of Christendom. But they are verses which we need to be reading from time to time. They are like a tonic. Because sometimes we tend to measure the effectiveness of a church by the number of prophecies that they, they have said. If you come from this church, you will say, in your church, do they speak accurate prophecies? How many accurate prophecies do you have on your website? That's not the standard for measuring the truth, truthfulness of a church. Hallelujah. The standard for measuring the truthfulness of a church is how far are we persuaded in the will of God? How far are we committed to the will of God? How far are we persuaded in the, in the matters of the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. Verse 21 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Do you realize the will is now surfacing again? It has to do with the mindset that we need to have. The mindset that we need to have is to have the bigger picture, which is the will of God. Accommodating the smaller picture, which is your own will. Do you understand what I just said? You need to have the bigger picture, which is the will of God. Accommodating the smaller picture, which is your own will. Is your own will a subset of the will of God? Or your own will is a set which is competing with the will of God? In a competition between a stone and water, the stone eventually lost and it began to crawl on the riverbed. It began to flow together with the water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In a contest or in a wrestling between a stone and water, it's always the water which wins eventually. In a contest between the will of God and your own will, it's the will of God which shall prevail. Because the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 2, for by strength shall no man what? Prevail. 
By your own carnal strength, you will not prevail. Hallelujah. Amen. It is the will of God which shall prevail. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So in your decision making, you must be guided by the will of God. In my decision making, I must be guided by the will of God. I must ask myself, how is my relationship or my friendship with so and so enhancing the will of God? How is my job enhancing the will of God? How is what I'm doing these days pushing forward the will of God? How is it linked to the will of God? Are my actions these days hindering or promoting the will of God? Are the things that I'm watching on television promoting or hindering the will of God in my life? Are the people that I have around me as my friends promoting or hindering the will of God? Are the books that I'm reading these days promoting or hindering the will of God? You must ask yourself that question. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even in your choice of a marital partner, I'm talking about those who haven't chosen. In your choice of a marital partner, your chosen marital partner, are they hindering or promoting the will of God in your life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are people who know that God, from time to time as he wills, he uses me prophetically. Sometimes they, they want me maybe to, to pray with them to God. So that we can hear the opinion of God about relationship issues. Let me tell you something. It's highly unlikely that you will hear God in an audible voice or in a dream telling you, go and marry Sponogushe, or go and marry Sletugutula, or go and marry Tavani, or go and marry Moses. It's highly unlikely that you will hear such a voice speaking to you. Hallelujah. 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 It's highly unlikely that you will hear such a voice. You will have to clean through the word of God and uh, have a checklist. Number one, is this person a believer? You will be using the word of God. You will use 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33. The Bible says, do not be, uh, I mean, better association spoils useful habits. Elsewhere, the Bible says, do not be unevenly yoked with an unbelief. So if I'm in a relationship with this person that I'm in a relationship with, am I fixing God or am I fixing the will of God in my life? Yeah. Am I fixing the pastor or I am hindering the will of I'm throwing spanners into the work of the will of God in my life. To what extent am I promoting the will of God? If I'm busy flirting with the different women on Facebook, to what extent am I cheating this woman or am I cheating this woman or I am cheating the will of God in my life? If I'm busy befriending, I mean, strange women and all sorts of women, some, some, some people that we befriend on Facebook, they are not even women. You'll be thinking you are talking to a man. There is someone that I assisted who was, who was being affected by homosexual spirit. And we traced prophetically the homosexual spirit, how it permeated into their lives. We discovered that they thought they were engaging people of the opposite sex on Facebook. When it was people of the same sex as them, who was masquerading as a person of the opposite sex. And then they would start to send the romantic messages to each other, you know. And then later on you will develop an inclination. Two was. Two was. Hallelujah. 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 The guy was a pedophile. It's called a pedophile. These people have no good abantu anabangani. And on, on Facebook, he was pretending to be around 18 years. A 55-year-old man, he was pretending to, around, to be around 18 years. So he befriended this young girl who was in high school. And they arranged. But fortunately, the parents, 
they discovered a, ch a certain change in the behavior of their daughter, and they alerted the security system in UK. And so they began to track this girl, their activities. She didn't know that her messages were being read by the security people in UK on the internet. And then they were exchanging. And this 55-year-old man, in Kalakatendo, Telempavanga, Lomzimboro, Tant, in Jongandlovu, in Kalakatai Giant, he was pretending to be 18 years old. And for Gokum Picture, Gokum Pano Gunano, Gumila, so Facebook. Ancho. So. <laughs> We arrange to go to and look at the and look at somewhere for a day out. You know, we tell you, this 55-year-old man got the Amas Secret Service police. The Amas say it even melted, but we bump. Just imagine, there are a lot of young girls who disappear in UK only to be seen by rich or by field, just because they befriend people whom they do not know. Now, in your social networking. I'm not introducing a new law on social networking. Here in this church, we, uh, we don't introduce laws on anyone. Whatever discourse, whatever social intercourse, whatever social engagement you are having with those whom you are engaging, in the groups that you are engaging in, you need to ask yourself, to what extent am I promoting the will of God in my life uh, through my social engagements, through my social networking? Because the Bible says, not everyone who is saying, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. It's very easy for me as a pastor to say, Lord, Lord, to Jesus. But is my behavior conformed to the promotion of the will of God in my life? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let us finish off those three verses. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Uh, cast out demons in your name? And done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to, you, to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Or you who practice lawlessness. Excuse me. I will take verse 23 again. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Let us go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to verse 23. I see what I want. I will show you what I want to do. I will show you what I want to do. I will show you what I want to do. I will show you what I want to do. I will show you what I want what about what it was a Zuluin? Malconi Chica Malang. What in Tandrako Mayans you empire in Yam? What in Tandrako Mayans you empire in Yam? What to Musako Mauze? Hallelujah. Say, Our Father who is in heaven. Say, Hallowed be your name. Say, may your will be done on earth. Say, may your will be done, especially in my life. As it is being done in heaven. And may your kingdom come. Hallelujah. 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 I know most of us were able to chorus that prayer. But if you check that prayer, Preeminent in that prayer is the name of God, and it is the will of God. The will of God being done on earth, who is on earth, it's you and me. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you want to know the secret formula, it's not even secret of entering the kingdom of God. It's doing the will of God. Not doing the will of your church, but doing the will of God. In your decision making, you must ask yourself, how does this relate to the will of God? If, if I do this, how ta, it, is it promoting the will of God? If I gossip others, does it promote the will of God? If I hate other people, does it promote the will of God? If I'm looking for a job, how will it promote the will of God? If I'm looking for a marriage, 
Am I looking for a marriage because of biological pressures in my board? Or I want to promote the will of God? Until there was an intersection between the will or the desire, because the will of God is the desire of God. A will is a desire. In Tanto, each of Ugulanga Zelela Romund Ugulanga Zelela Gramkulunkulu, Yiko Ogazala was a woman parent. Njalo Oenza, in Tanto, Gumben Ugulanga Zelela Gramkulunkul, Muena Ozala was a woman parent. Lof Nuenza Kintando. I was a mochanga, and I was in Bupis, Yabizo Cheka Avanta Tebesens in Tanto Gaba Unkulunkul, or Sazuluin. Mobinta Unkulunkul, we are strong a fee or pet. Who has got life in himself? Just as the Father has got life in himself. Jesus Christ said that in the Synoptic Gospel, in the book of John. He said, just as the Father has life in himself, so has he given the Son to have life and to give life as well. Why has the Son been given life? To transfer life. Because the Son didn't come to do his own will, but he came to do the will of the Father. Do you think God put you on this earth to do your own will? Let us go to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. As I conclude, maybe the first part, and then we will do the other part next week. Revelation, Usambul. Revelation chapter 4. Siswe, Uguti Pipe Listelan, Moguba Kona, where Twem Saben. Uguti Sabakona, and my Utunkulunkulu. Why pressurize was in glosses in here as as corn, Agumbeni says sitting on Unculunculu Talavant, the operator, he campaign over town who pity the portico and unless you win. So who made Talavant, so who made Talim Trial, didn't attempt a win. How did God create the things which were created? Was there an operation picket in the street, or was there an operation this flag, or that flag, or our flag, or their flag, or his flag, or her flag? What kind of operation was there for God to create? What propelled God to create the things that he created? Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will, they exist and were created. By your will, they exist and they were created. Everything which exists on this earth exists because of the will of God. It ceases to exist. It's as simple as all that. The reason why you are a man and not a woman is because God wanted a man like yourself. To fulfill a certain part in his grand plan of the universe. There is a greater picture to the picture of your life. There is a greater scheme to the scheme of your life. And the greater scheme to the scheme of your life is the kingdom of God. It is this concept which is called the kingdom of God. So in your decision making, in my decision making, to what extent do I fit into the greater scheme which is the kingdom of God? Because by your will, they were created and they exist. Hallelujah. Sia lizuti paipi litin. I paipi listen is wuti. Owen zuti slata zbe kon uchani bube kona. Avan to bebe kona. I si kogunye ushaya na wezinto. Ogu tai pik bang. Es wichelong avan to be physics, ava pupu takes wem satan. Avang elankulunku lesing ontwensa wele and shizwenza. Avati waba lugushaya no wukul. Gwama gas. Gumbenu waba lugu shano kukulu wezi nitu eza zikona nga soni leso skat. Kunga gabi kona leso skona nga desi. Zapongu ngubuza na za shayana waso upuma wantu. Lo chan. Nga manka ka satan. Wati nga manka ka satan. Wati nga manka ka satan. Wati nga manka ka satan. Say we exist because of the will of God. 
Say, I exist, I exist because of the will of God. Unless and until you discover the will of God for your life, you will be frustrated for the rest of your life. And the will of God for your life is different from the will of God for my life. Hallelujah. Unless you go back to the divine manufacturer in his word, in his manual, which is called the Holy Bible, which has got two major divisions, the Old Testament and the New Testament, unless you discover the mind of the divine manufacturer, his opinion about your life, your life will be based on useless opinions. Your opinion about your own life is useless. My opinion about your own life is useless. Their opinion about your own life is useless. It is the opinion of God which matters. And if your life does not line up with the opinion of God for your life, I mean you will be wasted. Just imagine, speaker a school God is speaker in. Or it is something for facilitating in a PA system and amply Fication of a voice so that a voice or a sound or a song is amplified and people are able to enjoy the music. Hallelujah. There is a certain Christian preacher from the Americas who visited Japan. And then he went to a certain place where they were selling artifacts which are used in the Shinto temple. In Japan, people, a lot of people are not Christians. They worship some gods. So you went to a certain shop, a souvenir shop, where they sell artifacts which are used. Some of the artifacts are used to worship some Japanese gods in the Shinto temple. And he started to, he took one of those things. He said, what is this for? When the Japanese was busy trying to explain, he started to fan himself because it was what? And the, the, the person who was selling those things, he was offended. And he was confused because the thing looked like a fan. You know those, those papers which you can open and you start to fan yourself. They told him, no, you, you, you are messing up. And people, if people see you, they can stone you to death because this is used to worship our gods. He didn't know the purpose. He didn't know the purpose. Say purpose. purpose. Say purpose. purpose. The concept of purpose is attached to the concept of will. If you don't know the will of God for your life, you live a life of imitating and copying others. I've got friends who are businessmen. I've got friends who are chartered accountants. I've got people that I learned with at school who are politicians. But does it mean I also ought to be a politician? No. A big no. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why? Because the will of God for my life is to hold the microphone and to preach the message of what? Of life. During the time of Jesus, there are some people who were politicians, some people who were churches, they in the Sanhedrin, the Jewish high court system, or the Jewish judiciary system. And this, Jesus could have copied those people. Graduating from Joseph's school of carpent and woodwork, he could have chosen to pursue a career in business. And with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, he could have become a very successful businessman. Because according to John chapter 14, verse 26, when the helper, the Holy Spirit comes, he shall teach you all things. He could have been taught how to do financial management, corporate finance, cost-benefit analysis, and a lot of other analysis, risk management, operation risk management. And he could have started a multinational company, but it was not the will of God the Father for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The will of God to the Father for him was that he should preach the gospel for three and a half years and then die for us on the cross. That was the will of God the Father for him. The will of God the Father for John the Baptist was not for John the Baptist to marry or to have children. Some people would say, now I've got the spirit of Elijah, I've got the spirit of John. Are you just imitating John in the Bible or God has communicated with you? You will say you have got the spirit of John when you actually have the spirit of Abraham of being a father of many nations. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 
We must not imitate. Because you are an original. Say I'm an original. Amen. Say there is no one like me. I know the Bible says there is no one like me referring to God. But you are also unique in your own right. Because there is a specific blueprint. There is a specific will. There is a specific purpose. A tailor-made purpose that God created you for. If you abandon your workstation, you'll be doing like Lucifer and the demons who abandoned their workstation in heaven. And their names, because of abandoning their workstation, it changed from holy angels to demons. The devil was actually called Lucifer or the, the morning star when he was still in heaven. And then when he missed his purpose, when he missed the will of God for his life, he became Diabolos. You know what Diabolos means? The metaphoric interpretation of the word Diabolos. Diabolos is a Greek word which means someone who aims the bull's eye. It means someone like if you are playing darts, you know darts. darts. So there is a black spot which is called the bull's eye. Diabolos, it means someone who aims the bull's eye. It tells us of the nature of the devil. Because dire, it means in the center of a circle. That's why we've got the word diameter. These are Greek words. We've got the word diameter. Dire, it means it, anything in reference to the circumference of a circle. So, Diabolos, the metaphoric interpretation is anyone who is who is going around aiming other people so that they become derailed like him? Do you go around aiming other people so that they become derailed like you? So that they abandon their station. When I forget church, so you, you begin to say, Ah, like some who profit as and some who mark and you and benefits and and you send some when you want to give you in and then that are you in and then to my and then we in. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And Sam Gubang or Munyumundu, you fell in Yen and Amfun within Sam Gubang or Munyumundu. Lawe, I am here as a messenger of the gospel to encourage you to be yourself in the name of Jesus. Unasam Gubang Unasban, be yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. God needs you. We need you. The kingdom of God needs you. Hallelujah. Say, I will be myself. Say, I will be myself. Because the world needs me. What thing you are less Zuluin? Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Ufanele when Uncle Siet. Non kulun kuluetu. Ugam gela in Kasmulo not to Monamanta. Moguban wena or Tala is in Tosonke. Nang in my end and Yako Zabako Nazatal. Nang in my end and Yako Zabako Nazanjan Zatal. See, corner M. Saben in my end and Gankulunkul. All right. Now, see, corner M. Saben in my end and Gankulunkul. It's obvious that for us to live forever, we must pursue the what? The will of God. Because human beings were not produced by their mother's womb or by the feelings, the sexual feelings which were propelling their fathers, but they were produced by the will of this person that we can't see who is in heaven. His will is preeminent. Because even after producing you, your father and your mother had no means of sustaining you. They couldn't enter your head or enter your nostrils to cause you to, to breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. They could not operate you as a person operates a machine. You had to be self-propelled. And that being self-propelled, it has to do with the will of God. The one who created you wants you alive. You are alive today. Because you and I, we are alive today because we still haven't done the will of God the Father. When the will of God the Father for your life is accomplished, and then your life in this system of things, in this sight of eternity, will come to an end. The reason why you are still alive is because there is a space. We ask how there is a space in the vineyard of God. There is a space in the kingdom of God. Where, where you haven't done your part. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ngai amin di magu ikuba ngu refru eka ek round. Amatime pore zal. Angyege ngibe ngama play as angu 22 foot. Azala ipor. Hallelujah. Each and every person has to play their part. If since we were produced by the will of God, it's only the will of God which shall sustain us. Hallelujah. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord. I seek your will this afternoon. Say, oh Lord. oh Lord. Say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Give, me a Give me a mindset which is seeking and pursuing your will. Hallelujah. 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 When your actions, when your actions and your decisions are anchored on the will of God, your actions and decisions are long lasting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next week I'm going to explore certain principles that uh, should guide, guide our thinking. Hallelujah. That should guide our thinking. Let us go to the book of Proverbs as I conclude the first part of this message. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but is not, his heart is not with you. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In your decision making, how do you make your decisions? Do you rely on the word of God? Do you rely on wise counsel? Or you make decisions on your own? What do you use as a basis for your decision making? I want you to ask yourself, say, what do I use as the basis for my decision making? Say, what is important to me as a basis for my decisions? Still in Proverbs there, I want us to go to Proverbs chapter 11. I promised you that I will read a couple of verses in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Uzaka. Isatugong, Eska 11. Verse 14. I'm concluding my, my sermon, or our sermon. Hallelujah. So if you were wondering what God is saying in your life, He's saying re examine whether you are in the center of God's will. I want you to ask yourself, am I in the center of God's will? Ask yourself, say, am I in the center of God's will? Say, am I in the center of God's will? Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. I'll read it first in Zulu and then in English. It says, Lapo kunyeko izeluleko abantu bayawa kepa lapha kukhona abaluleki abaningi lapho kukhona ukuphumelela into zakho zonke zo izinqumo zenzayo bangaka abantu abakwelulekayo ngezinqumo zabo kumbene uzenzela ukuthi izinqumo kwakho sikrele bela ngcamte ganga vele uyacatsha we are Dalma Tachela, and I sing a man to an assassin Dalma Tachela. Mamta sends into Zokang, we have a touching. Kungela Zelule. Kumen Mam to questions cut the icon a kang as such. But through ignorance, my sense into Zalang Mond. Cutting is a lule. When I'm Jungum Tagan Kulunkul, Unga gains is no mescaratele empilenyak. Zingag is a lule was tinga. How much advice from people who are courtly like yourself do you seek? The Bible says, where there is no counsel, people fall or they perish. But where there is a multitude of counselors, plans are established. Plans are established. 
where there is a multitude of wise counselors. Hallelujah. Amen. Plans are established. Where there is a multitude of counselors. And one of the counselors that we must take into account before we, we make any decision, before you make any decision, is the Holy Spirit. You must ask yourself, this thing which I'm doing, or this thing which I'm resolving, what are you saying, Holy Spirit? If you find it difficult to address God with the decision that you are making, it's highly likely that it is a wrong decision. If you find yourself embarrassed to pray about your decision, it's highly likely that you are on the highway to making a wrong decision. You are on the wrong decision highway. Say wrong decision highway. When we are talking about a multitude of counselors, we are not talking of a multitude of people on WhatsApp or Facebook who are also headed in a wrong direction. As Hallelujah. What evil doing Kamban? So, the multitude of counselors that we are talking about, it's not a multitude of counselors who are headed nowhere or who are headed in a wrong direction. It's a multitude of wise counselors. And among your wise counselors, there must be the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. But let his father go put his God and I'm choosing a marital partner. Or I'm choosing a marital partner. I'm choosing a marital partner. I'm choosing a what is this law on What is Because if you sideline the Holy Spirit when you are making important decisions, do you think you will convey your prayers to God to the Father when you are in Trump? Especially self-inflicted trouble. Most of the problems that we are going through are problems that are related to the wrong decisions that we made in the past. Today, we, as we conclude this first part of this message entitled Decisions, Kingdom Mindset, I would want us to repent. Hallelujah. But before that, before that, there is a verse or a portion of scripture that I want us to read. Let us go to Romans chapter 12. Ikola penya tuna kona. Nyawazi tisengi leska tesi ten chumayela. Nenga yugu tukula vantu kumele mbata andaze. Nisa kumakona. Happy message am is long. But I will not struggle to finish it today. I will not strive to finish it today. I will finish it next week. I'm going to read Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and verse 2. I want to show you something. As we conclude, Abba say Roma, it's a two on twelve. If there's one lot, what is in Vumele and in Lomoine? A group on a leogi of what's up about John Abetoka and Slamper, see Vumele and in Lomoine. What is in Vumele and in Lomoine? What is in Vumele and in Lomoine? What is in Vumele and in Lomoine? We have to come down and kick, 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 kick. We check in time, but when I go to Facebook, come back to WhatsApp. Who busy at the? We do not check in. We do not ask. We do not go into a chat. I don't know. 
We have a chief prince. Good Daniel, good lama chief princes. We have a chief prince. 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 We have a What did the groups that I belong to, did I agree with the Holy Spirit? What did the friends that I have, did I agree with the Holy Spirit? You know, a wise person once said, if I, if I want to know where you are going, I just check your friends. In terms of your life and your future. If I always see you among people who love singing, who are recording music, I know that you are also a singer. If I always see you among drunkards, I know that you, even though you are not yet drinking, you are on apprenticeship, you are on apprenticeship, very soon you will be drinking. You can finish the other things as you go. Hallelujah. 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 What is it? Vumele ne in lomo ingwe. These days, minantesta njalo pe. Abantu ngabe funugu njo ini sa something. Mane ngama krupe is kipa kwa. U adminu yabe loke mfaka. Ngize ntune nsitu wena admin. Amfu nugu base krupe ni yako. Kula abantu abe funa. Just imagine. Abanya abantu abatantu kusenso admin. Abantu abanga konsiv. Babe was good to Uba Elita, Mundule impartation. We have a funu tebe Elita. I really saw the impartation. Wakane, give over to Gulus, a memo, a mine, which the event yet solved, and there are belief in Toskankulunku, Ufunuba, administrator, and Piliam. Possenga Kulumogunoga Kulinum, Munum Tuan, a funu tetis teacher, Kota, Atiputu. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ufunu wang admin wen pilu yam. Ufunu administrate. Uze, oge krup kwa nkwa kabe kulu administrate wang akonzi. Nga masantu yeswa, where were you? Egubuza after the service. When I administrator, I was worshipping my God because by his will I exist and I exist to do his will. Where were you at me? You are always on WhatsApp. When do you pray at me? Hallelujah. What at me? 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 What Perfect is my posted as a lamp service. Ebusu at me, Hambella, Aluens, and two Fugutandas. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Avanya Conapango at me, Navanga Langlet. Hambes Busu, what you want at me and allow? Ligu Fumel and in Lomo England. What did you go Fumel and in Lomo England? Hallelujah. Pela kulo kunyonga ma decisions esi kwenza. Okus okupaya yukube kusi westeli skat. A minute lost in your life. It's a life lost. Because one thing which I love about God. Kasi nika ngi mzimbe linganayo. Kasi nika nga ma voice linganayo. Kasi nika ngi nzebez linganayo. Abanya sila ma kanda ma kulu kula. Abanya sila mzimbe mkulu kula. Abanya sila ma voice ma kulu kula. Abanya. But in tue ngi tandelu nkulu nkulu. Wadu ngu president. Kumbenu inkosu. Kumbenu ngu salten. Kumbenu inyanga. Kumbenu ngu mtagat. Kumbenu ngu mfundis. Kumbenu ngu mprofet. Kumbenu win. All of us are given 24 hours in a day. If you are poor out after a year. It's. It's because of how you are using your time. If you abuse time, the future will abuse you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lot of people cry about child abuse. They cry about wife abuse or husband abuse. But the greatest abuse that is being experienced on earth is time abuse. A lot of people abuse their time. How do you use your time? All of us are given 24 hours in a day. There are people who are my age. I'm 40 years this year. There are people who are my age. They don't have an education. They don't have anything in their lives to write home about. And yet we went to school at the same time. 
How come they haven't achieved anything in their lives? At a certain point, they were making certain useless decisions. And they, instead of being at school, maybe they were drinking. How you use your time will even determine your eternity. You will see next week when I'm concluding this message. I know a lot of people say we will enter heaven by grace. Yes, but it's an incomplete answer. Say incomplete answer. Say incomplete answer. Go and read your Bible in the book of Revelation chapter 20. Those who were dead, when they resurrected, they were judged according to what was written in the books of their works. Go and read the book of Daniel in chapter 12. Gutwa, when they were resurrected, some went to, they resurrected to the resurrection of everlasting life. And others, they resurrected to the resurrection of everlasting damnation. According to their what? Their deeds. Even in John chapter 5. You will see when we are concluding this matter next week. What you do in this life will determine your direction after resurrection if you will die before Jesus Christ comes back. It's what you do in the body which determines your destiny. In this dispensation and in the next dispensation of endless times or eons of years which is called commonly eternity. How you invest your time now will determine what you harvest next. It will determine your destination. You can't have your feet facing M. Kanwin, and then you find yourself after two hours if you are working at El Uvev. It's impossible. Yeah. If you pick one end of the stick, you automatically pick the other end of the stick. So in life, we must use the carpenter's rule, which say you measure twice and you cut how many times? Once. Because the decision that you make with your time, it can either make or break you. It can either make or unmake your life. Most of the decisions, most of the pain that you are going through, I know there are a lot of PhD ministries, prophetic healing and deliverance ministries, and we are moving up and down looking for deliverance. The greatest deliverance that you need, my brother, the greatest deliverance that you need, my sister, is the deliverance from making wrong decisions. That's the greatest demon that we need to cast out today and next week. The demon of making wrong decisions and expecting positive outcomes from negative decisions that you make in your life. You must make high quality decisions to live a high quality life. And by making high quality decisions, you exclude yourself from making from experiencing negative consequences in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus was in the wilderness, he had to make fast decisions. The devil was bombarding him with one option after the other. Initially, he said, since you are hungry, Jesus, let us turn stones into bread. Jesus Christ said, it's a big no. And then the devil said, let us climb the temple and see. Because he's a deceiver. And Jesus Christ climbed to the pinnacle of the temple. And the devil said, you see, people are moving in the temple. If you can fly like best men in the future, uh, people already will have a mega ministry in a short while. You won't need to be moving up and down on foot to create a ministry. And Jesus Christ said, the Bible says we must not tempt the Lord, our God. And then the devil said, you know, all these kingdoms I can give you. And Jesus Christ, Christ gave him a big no. Jesus Christ's decision making in the wilderness, when the devil came against him, was a big no, a big no, a big no three times. Are you able to say no when some enticing situations come to you? Or you say yes, no, yes, no. And then your yes, no will be flicking like a robot, which changes from green, it's green, amber, red. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12, as we conclude. Nako nyani nenga, lam nyani nenga nam sanj. And then in nenga nyasisul. Hallelujah. Nyan nenga vasalwa. Nako nyan nenga vasalwa. Nivale pipe li, navatawa ne vatawangu tinyas kulumel. Mbale pipe li lesisul. Nako nyan nenga vasalwa. Mobubele bugan kulunkul, uguba. Ni nigele mizimbaye nibe ngumnigelo pili le onwele. 
otandeka kunkulu nkulu kube ngukonza kwenu kwa kukonda. Nina linyisile liizwe. Kwa toa ni kukulwe isimo ngwenzi wa ibe ncha ingondo yenu. Uguze nime nogusholi sisa ogu intando kankulu nkulu. Ogu ushe nogutandegayo nogupeleleyo. Hallelujah. Do you, do you see that the will of God is recurring again? Let me read it in English. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, for us, to make high quality decisions and to say we have got a kingdom mindset, we must know the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want you to ask yourself, am I in the good? Say, am I in the good? And acceptable? And perfect will of God. Let us stand up and pray. For some of us who will need to repent, because you have made wrong decisions in the past. And you are blaming your parents for wrong decisions. You are blaming demons. They might have assisted you to make wrong decisions. If you are on the highway, which is wrong decision making highway. You are, you are running on the highway of wrong decision making. Yet you are seeing the narrow path of making the right decisions. The path of making right decisions... Is a narrow path you will see next week when I conclude this message. The path to life is not a highway. It is a small path. Say a small path. If you are on the highway to making wrong decisions, you need to remove yourself from the highway of making wrong decisions by repenting before God. I'm not your God. I'm just your brother in Christ who happens to be your pastor. Hallelujah. And my job is to conscientize you. To say, if you pick a wrong, if you pick a wrong stick, definitely you'll have the other end of the stick being wrong. You must make the right decisions. You will see demons operating in your life. Hallelujah. But if you make high quality decisions, you decide my mind will be centered on the kingdom of God. When donations are being made to all the people's homes, I will be at the forefront of donating if I'm at work. When donations are being made to, 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 to stage crusades, to facilitate the spreading of the gospel, I will be at the forefront of promoting that. When you make that decision, God is going to promote your life. All of us, at a certain point in our lives, we made wrong decisions. I included as your pastor. So we need, first of all, to repent of the wrong decisions that we made. So that God can save us from the consequences of those, those wrong decisions. Unzilutintenlumshonzo. <laughs> So every decision has got its consequences. Your life, the quality of your life that you are living, is as a fruit or fruitage of the decisions that you made in the past. I don't know what decisions you made in the past. You can unmake those decisions by praying to God. We can unmake the negative consequences of those decisions by having an encounter with the Holy Spirit and pray to God to say, God, may you forgive me for making wrong decisions. I surrender my life unto you. I, I rededicate myself unto you. May you renew me. Let us pray. Father, we pray even this afternoon.